Fast TV, documenting the Nigerian story. All right, thank you for staying with us. It's Daybreak on Trust TV. Time for us to take a look at the next discussion on the program. Now, no fewer than 385 people have died and 416 have sustained injuries as a result of auto crashes in the past three months. The casualty figure was based on reported cases of road accidents from January to March this year, over speeding, overloading and some unacceptable attitudes of drivers have been identified by the Federal Road Safety Corps as the causes of the rising rate of auto crashes uh, in the country. We're talking a lot more about this, but first let's take a look at some uh, a breakdown of uh, some of the cases that we have just uh, highlighted. So you could see uh, right on your screen in some of the states that we have seen this incident. In Bauchi, for instance, uh, you have uh, in March alone, 23 people, uh, rather uh, 25 people died uh, in the month of March, on 23rd of March specifically, uh, along the Udugo Hadeja Potiskum Road in Gamawa, local government area. In Niger State, you have 24 persons died, and along the Etsu or village, uh, Bida Mokwa Road and also in Kebi State along Jega uh, Koko Road uh, where you have 23 people uh, died. So this is just uh, some of the cases that we've seen then. Uh, a total of 135 persons died, rather injured rather, uh, in uh, Plateau State. Uh, Plateau State is said to have the highest number of casualties. Uh, you also would have other figures uh, there that would show you reported number of casualties in auto crashes between January uh, to March 2023. The total is 385 and then the number of injured is uh, 446. Now, further breakdown will show you in Bochi you had uh, 98 people died between January to, the, to March in three months and then the number of people injured was 61. In Kebi State, 53 people died, number of injured people 40. In Niger, 39, with a uh, number of uh, uh, people that got injured uh, put at 12. 25 people died in Lagos, where you have higher number of people that got injured, uh, which is uh, 83. And in Kano, 23 people died with uh, three uh, injured in that state. So this gives you a breakdown. Uh, you have a uh, number of uh, total deaths in the month of January at uh, put at 175, the injured 198. Uh, February, uh, you have total number of people that died put at uh, 24 and then those injured 28. And in March, 186 died while those that got injured were 194. These are, this is the breakdown of uh, the figures that we are dealing with so far just in three months. Imagine 385 people uh, dying uh, due to road accidents. We have uh, the Federal Road Safety uh, Commercial Representative here in the studio, DCC Hassan Abdurrahman uh, Bima. He will be are talking to us about this and also joined by uh, Senior Special Advisor on Intergovernmental Affairs and NGOs, NURTW Headquarters, uh, Suleiman Danzaki, who we hope to have join us virtually much later uh, on the program. Thank you so much for joining us on Daybreak this morning. Thank you. Yes. Uh, this number that we are seeing, quite alarming. Do you find this unusual? Yes, it's actually unusual because at our end we are doing all we can, our boost put best to mitigate the crashes. Uh, as far as the road safety is concerned, on a daily basis, we have what we call money cry. We send our boys out before drivers start taking off from the parks to educate them. Not only the drivers, they talk to both the drivers and the passengers.
to educate them, enlighten them on the need to drive safely, on the need to exercise patience whenever they are on the road. Okay, we'll talk more on what the road safety is doing, but right now we want to understand why we have such alarming number. Uh, is there any reason you just could like, reduce... Just like, just like you have said, uh, the issue of speeding, Nigerians are of the attitude of speeding. If you have if you have to embark on a journey, what is important is for you to ensure you make proper arrangements. People don't take off in good time. You want to be in Lagos at a given period and you do not prepare yourself on what time you are supposed to go out. So in the course of the journey, you find people speeding unnecessarily just in order to meet up with the time he has targeted to arrive in that particular destination. These are some of the cause. The major cause of tra road traffic crisis these days is speeding. Okay. It's um, speeding. We, all the time, anytime you have an official of the road safety, yes. he gives us the, re the same reason for this accident, speeding, uh, overloading, yes. and all of that. And every year, the same thing. Like you said, your people go out and talk to the drivers and all of that. Why hasn't anything changed? Why? Because it appears as if the number of deaths and uh, those injured, it's going up. It's not going up. It's not going up. Our target like this year, our target is to ensure we have a 5% reduction. We have always, we have our strategic goals at the beginning of every year. And as much as possible, we struggle to ensure that that particular targets are met. Well, there's a, WH, there's a WHO report here that says Africa has the highest number of road accidents mm. uh, yearly, with Nigeria topping the list. So, we, so what we have, it's, it's not a good situation as it were. It's not a good one at all. It is never a good one. And on our side, we are also worried over this... Uh, incessant uh, 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 crashes. The commercial of recent when uh, the last one happened, was it in Bauchi, where we had to go out and interact with the transport unions, trying to find measures. This is, this is one of the reasons why I started off asking whether you find these numbers uh, of the last quarter unusual. If you say, for instance, compare with the figures from the last quarter of last year. Of last year. Uh, what has changed? Have we seen an increase or have we seen a reduction in this number? Three hundred. Uh, I, I don't have the figures of last year with me here. But uh, the facts still remain that on our part, on our part, as road safety, I mean uh, road managers, on our part, we, 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 we are dealing with people who maybe due to because majority of uh, our drivers very, very large number of our drivers commercial drivers i've said are uneducated are uneducated and uh, as much as possible we try even the highway code to translate them into other languages nigerian languages so that the the the, the, the drivers can be familiar will be able to know the real uh, uh, expectations once they are on the wheels. Once they are on the wheel. But as much as possible, the commercial has given a matching order to all the uh, commanding officers to ensure that our roads are safe through visibility, maximize maxim maxim visibility, presence of our men, especially in those areas that are prone to crashes. And that, I believe, will be able to uh, uh, reduce the number of occurrences. Okay. Uh, if you look at the month of March, for instance, the yes. month of March seemed to have had the highest number of uh, P 
people that died, uh, 186, uh, which is uh, far above what we saw in the month of February. Uh, do you think that perhaps the elections have anything to do with this? Well, it's I cannot actually link the two, but uh, probably, most probably, because during those periods, there were mass movements. There were movements all around. People were going from one part of the country to the other. So when we have such occasions, such uh, situations, uh, there is every likelihood that we experience uh, more, more crashes. But the, the election, electioneering period itself, I think uh, the number of crashes came down. I don't know the exact uh, date. The presidential election, that is. So in the, in the month of February, actually, we saw a reduction. Yes. Uh, it was uh, 24 people that were recorded to have died, have died yeah. in the month of February. February. So that's the month we had the presidential election, okay. uh, February 25th. Yeah. And then total number of injured, 28, which is a sharp decrease from that the over 100 and almost 200 that we saw in the month of January. Mm. And then also in March, we saw another escalation to you know almost 200 and, and so and so that's why i'm um, you know wondering whether there's any connection between i can i can't, know, I can't link it but, but then uh, let's talk about the, the the operations of the road safety corps in a period of an election season for instance uh whether or not there are some kind of uh, uh strategies you deploy basically to ensure safety of roads because apparently the roads are going to be much more busier than usual that is, uh, it's normal during such uh, situations, we ensure full deployment of staff, full deployment of staff, and even logistics, and even logistics. That is what we have been doing. Like we are in Easter period now. The commercials has given that marching directive to ensure men are deployed all over. And I also believe that as the Salah comes, you also deploy as well. But then, we've, we've started. Uh, but, but then, uh, to what extent will you describe the implementation of some of your policies? Because uh, I know that the road safety came up with this speed limit, speed device, limiter device, de yeah, devices, and then of course there are some uh, there are some parks where alcohol is sold. And uh, we know that some of these accidents happen because the drivers are under the influence and all of that. And then we also see that some accidents are caused by articulated vehicles. So what does the road safety do about all of this? Well, as far as we are concerned in the area of uh, sales of alcohol in the parks, I think we are receiving the cooperation of the NURTW. Uh, not only then, other stakeholders are also cooperating with us. I remember uh, about two weeks ago, I was in Nyaya for an enlightenment program, and uh, the DPO there uh, gave his full support and that they will swing into action to ensure no alcohol is sold at that particular park. And uh, I was made to know that the operation was actually carried out, was actually carried out. So we are doing our best. We are liaising with all the necessary uh, stakeholders to ensure uh, alcohols are not sold in the in the in the parks, and that and they were receiving the cooperation of uh, uh, the NURTW, and uh, in the area of articulated vehicles, we are also liaising with uh, the necessary transport unions regarding that, and uh, I believe we are doing our best also in that area. How about the speed limit devices? The speed limit, the, listen, the speed limit devices was introduced in 20, around 2017, I can remember actually. And uh, since then, the enforcement is on. Up till the present time, we're talking, the, the enforcement is still on. We, uh, for any vehicle that is arrested, that is found not to have a speed limiting device, such vehicles are booked. Such vehicles are booked. The law does not permit us to keep vehicles until when a person installs the speed limit. Once we, uh, a person is fined and he pays his fine, we allow him to carry his, uh, 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 his, uh, his vehicle. But as much as possible, the enforcement on uh, speed limiting device is ongoing. And I believe we are receiving the cooperation. And that is why even the number compared to the, 
uh, years back. You can see the, the figures. The figures is just in the uh, first quarter, as we have just said, that we're experiencing uh, rising cases. Otherwise, the uh, road traffic crashes has actually reduced. Uh, okay, yes, well, what's the road safety doing about people engaging in, you know, drinking and driving? So, for instance, you have people driving under the influence of whatever, may not necessarily be alcohol, but maybe some other kind of, uh, you know, intoxicants and the rest of them. Is, is there, what, what's the road safety doing about that? Is there a way of uh, checking and uh, maybe, you know, maybe arrest or what are the consequences of, you know, engaging? Yes. Like in the present exercise that we're doing, digital brutalizers are all over with our boys. Once a person is suspected to have taken anything because the behavior will show, once you understand the thinking or the person, a driver is reported by the passengers in the same vehicle with him that they are suspecting that their driver has taken a particular uh, uh, substance, a driver is tested. Mm. How does that happen? Right on the road. You will be tested. How practical does? Uh, how practical is this? How, how, how often do you get these drivers tested right on the road? How often does this the, happen? Our patrol teams have. We have equal, equally equalizers that a driver can break in. The same thing with the digital one. It, will, it actually shows whether. The driver, you know, we have uh, the, the blood alcohol content supposed not to be uh, more than 0 0.05. So once it is discovered that it is above that figure, that vehicle will be turned back to the office. Mm. All right. Um, in this particular story that well, said... But, sorry, Stella. Yes. Uh, what about the consequences? You've not talked about that and whether or not the kind of arrest that you have made and what, you know, this, what are the sanctions that yes, people uh, have uh, If you are I mean, driving under the influence of alcohol and you are caught, a ticket will be issued. Fines will be uh, fined. If, uh, I can't actually remember the, the, the amount presently now. So if you are issued that ticket, the driver will not be allowed to carry the vehicle along immediately. Arrangement will be made. We'll contact the park so that they can bring him another new vehicle to convey the passengers to wherever they want to go. Hmm. And in some cases, drivers are equally delayed for, for days. You'll, you'll be coming for enlightenment, for education. Talking about issuance of uh, tickets, uh, we also know that when you see uh, somebody driving and making phone calls, yes. the person is stopped and issued a ticket. But there are also allegations that there are some personnel of the road safety that don't really issue this ticket. When they stop the car, the car, the driver comes down, talks to them in whatever language they want to talk, and the driver is let go. We've had such allegations. I, I, um, I cannot say that is not true. In every organization, you are bound to have some misbehavior from your personnel. But as much as possible, for anybody caught driving, I mean, making calls while driving, the person is supposed to be issued a ticket. There's no two way about it. For anybody who compromise, we have our surveillance teams. They are all everywhere. They go out to check the boys. Once you're caught, <laughs> you know you are leaving the job. No two way about it. With, with your experience working, do you think that the fines that you've always find people is enough to, you know, bring about deterrent? Because, I mean, I how think, do you measure that? I think generally, the, even in our courts in Nigeria, the fines that are being uh, awarded or given to uh, offenders, it's at a very uh, low level. And I think we are also working towards ensuring there's uh, an increase in the amount of fines. Because when you want to make a person to change in his attitude, yeah, the person, you make that person to suffer it. But when you give a fine of say three, five thousand, hmm, the person goes and pay. He, 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 he doesn't feel the pain of what the amount, he looks at the amount to be very visible. I think uh, the co is making effort 
and uh, thinking on that, along that uh, direction in, in increasing the funds. All right. Um, um, on this story, in this particular story, one of the reasons that the road safety officials gave for the accidents is um, importation of fake tires and fake uh, brake parts and all of that. So um, the road safety, is there any kind of collaboration between the road safety and the standard organization of Nigeria on this particular issue? Very much. Uh, I remember almost the same period, 2017 or thereabout, we started emphasizing, talking about tires, educating drivers on tires. And uh, the collaboration is there between us and uh, the son. We are collaborating in that, uh, in that uh, very aspect. And uh, our boys, I see when they go out, they check drivers, uh, the, the operational uh, staff, the ones on it, they check tires of vehicles, blind roads, check their expiration, check if they are worn out, even check spare, spare tires, whether a person is carrying a spare tire or not. And in that circumstance, if you are found to be guilty of such offense, you are, you are penalized. You are issued a ticket to go and pay fines. As much as possible, we, we try to discourage the use of uh, uh, Tokumbo tires because those are rejected tires in the places where they brought them. They are rejected. So it's just like saying dead on arrival. Hmm? Something coming in which you know is harmful to you, and we are using it. We are using them. We try as much as possible on this issue. We are educating motorists on daily basis. Okay, on All daily right. basis. All right. We need to. Uh, All right. So let's uh, avoid join. Let's motors. join uh, the special advisor on intergovernmental affairs and NGOs uh, of the NURTW headquarters. That's uh, Suleiman Anzaki, who is. Uh, uh, with us via phone. Thank you so much for joining us uh, this morning on Daybreak, Danzaki. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, my so, contribution is that uh, very clear. You see, we leave the actual uh, tenants and uh, apprenticeship of driving. Driving is profession, be it a commercial or a private. Provided that you handle the steering, you are applying the road, you are a driver. All the offenses is not only relying on the commercial drivers. One, in the first place, all the apprenticeship that we know right from the right traffic ordinance, it has been discarded. You must have to get somebody to get a learner permit. I have been insisting on this to go back to the building. You give me the three months in the line of permit, you drive in with an aircraft in here, the second time, and the third time, that is nine months. Giving somebody a license without going through all this, uh, all this uh, apprenticeship, actually it is like giving somebody a rifle, and then you do without telling him how to defend himself, and how to manage the rifle, and actually to go to the public, and kill people. And all this thing is going to rely on the authority that we are giving the powers and invested with that authority. And we that got the license in the years. I used to always talk to and insisting on this. If you ask me, if you, I see an accident, I ask you what is happening. In the previous year, there was no good work. There was no vehicles that are speeding as much as what we are seeing today. But there is less accident. And when you go to some places, there is a lot of this I know. It is the powers of the government to afford, to afford the vehicle in such an order to insert a vehicle. And also, he is the only person to give you a license. Now it has been divided into like, like 26 states that they have their different drive, uh, VIOs. Quite and some of the states are also uh, 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 wipe out the VIOs and just put some people that who they are not even trained. And also, the issue of licensing and safety is now is no more there. People are only relying on the gener revenue generation. The saving of life on our highways is more than what people are thinking about the revenue. Forget about the revenue. The government will have to complement about it.
in saying that the road accident is being reduced. But I'm telling you that every penny is talking about the road they're generating as a revenue from the road traffic. Road traffic is like an area in the city they know that they are to prevent the life and properties on the highway. Not even thinking about the revenue. Not about thinking about the booting somebody. Penalty is not, is not going to be, when you are saying that you are going to penalize people with a strict penalty without a good training, you can't get it right. So if I, if, I understand you, if I understand your submission, you are saying that uh, authorities seem to focus more on the revenue generation aspect of road safety rather than the safety of people on the roads itself, isn't it? Absolutely. Let me give you an example of the state where I am, Kaduna. So they are saying that they have, to, uh, they have uh, removed the vehicles on the road because they are not generating more. They are generating a mega amount of money, but when they bring the Castelia, they are bringing billions of naira. So they are not even talking. There is nothing about the instruction of the vehicle. When you go, you want to get your renew your license, you want to renew your particular. You only ask to pay the money. You will see that inspection, that the uh, change of owners law, this thing. You don't even go in for to know actually what is happening. So that is the problem. We are just a pushing blame to the operators. Operators don't know anything. When you say that you are talking, you are pushing blame to, uh, the, to, to operators. You are making a great mistake. The laws, the laws are made to somebody to, to make somebody to save somebody. To absolutely go out uh, to, 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 to the tenets of the law. But it's not so in Nigeria. You are counting a lot, but they have never gone back to drawing board. You know, okay, the, in, in, in 1842, a vehicle that was a factor was invented at that particular time it was moving two kilometers per hour. But at least that vehicle had an angle when you were going to a selected area, and even the driver got a fracture. Talk less about the vehicle that is going 100 or 120, and they are talking about only commercial vehicles. They don't stop, they don't listen. When you see them, they are only talking about the, the, the even not about the, 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 the roadness of the vehicle. The road will start from the vehicle, the, the, even the wiper is part of the road worthy. But it's not so now. When we are driving one at uh, that particular time, even the color, even the color of the rear light, you must have to make it right. So you see that a lot of things that is done, and sometimes when you say a big man comes with a very good vehicle, they, they even salute you and give you a compliment and go. So that's the road. When you are on the road, you are emotionally. You, you don't need to identify yourself. You want to, you need to know that whether you are applying, you are complying with the rules. If you don't do it, you salute me, you, you give me a compliment and say, or okay, you commit an offense. Then even if it is already right, taking him to prison, you take him to prison. But the people are defending because traffic, traffic offense is not a criminal offense. That is why everybody is doing whatever he likes to do, not officially the private. You see that uh, why why does the commercial vehicle that are giving more emphasis? Because they are carrying more passengers. One a, a, a commercial vehicle. Yes, that but but they are carrying about. But you know, Suleiman, uh, one of the issues that have been identified in this instance has to do with, say, for instance, overloading. Uh, we've had several instances, and we are aware that if you go to the parks now, the number of people that are being conveyed in vehicles is certainly beyond the number that the vehicle is meant to carry. We know that for a fact, and that has continued over and over. So who is to blame for that? I mean, if you are caught in the process... At best, perhaps they, you'll be fined for that if that happens, you know. But again, the people themselves, the drivers themselves, need to be uh, very uh, cautious of their own safety. Do you see that happening? You go to the regulated motor park that allowed by the government. Like, for, let me give you an example of uh, Abuja. Abuja, as big as Abuja, and the seat of power of the federal government, we only have three motor parks originally designated for the package. That is Otako, Zuba, and, 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 and Karu. But there is an illegal motor park where they don't even have the right. But go to the local government, you see that um, a, a single junior staff is giving a license, the loading and uploading, they converted it to, to motor park. 
so that we must have to do that. Even the reducing the way hours and the rest of them must have a knife and join and have a family that they have in one of us. You see that we have a manifest. A small vehicle that have the number of vehicles, the number of passengers in the car, you cannot exceed. We inform three at the back. And that is the number of the manifest will read only five people. But when you go to the, 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 the side, when you go to the motor at the side, you will see a lot of people carrying, a lot. you go to the road and see the what a vehicle will carry the passengers that he told. Who, 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 is is responsible, who is responsible for these illegal parks? Who is supposed to ensure that these illegal parks do not you know, exist? The, the Federal Capital Territory. What the law say that uh, is only the VI or that anywhere the, the vehicle will park and talk about the pricing and also look at the roadworthy of that vehicle. They are not seeking it now. You will see the VI or you will see many of them on the road. They are just looking. They are just looking about the, 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 the particulars. They are not looking about the rocket years of the vehicle that flying the road. They don't care about it. And the road safety too, I think that they must have to sit down. There is a lot of there is a lot of disarray in their operation. You know, if the rest of you only look at the system and the police and the will tell you that this one is the rest of But generally, the traffic offenses is the same thing. There is this body on the road, they either did uh, the, 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 the MTD or whatever. They must have to check to look at the rear light, they look at the tires, they look at the everything and the contents even inside the vehicle. You must have to look at the seat and see whether it is, uh, the vehicle is not working. Okay. Right. It's not so loud. Okay, just hold on, Suleiman. Uh, we have uh, okay. in the studio the core marshal of uh, uh, the representative of the core marshal Federal Road Safety Corps, Abdurrahman. Uh, you pa have heard, you know, some of the issues that he have raised. We'd like for you to respond to some of the uh, allegations, if you like. Uh, generally, our enforcement is not targeted uh, at uh, uh, commercial drivers only. We, as much as possible, operate along the road and we make arrests for anybody who contra will contravene any of the traffic rules, being private or commercial. He talked about the emphasis on revenue generation instead of actually the safety of motorists and the drivers. On, in the aspect of driver's license, he said. I mean, the aspect of, uh, that was what he was saying. Mm. Yes. As far as the driver's license is, uh, is concerned, on our part, the law said, we design and produce. We design the driver's license and then produce the driver's license. The requirements, the requirements, the processes that a person has to go through and be satisfied to be issued a driver's license lies with the vehicle uh, inspection officers. You see, and the system is done, is the, the new system we, we introduced is a very good one for anybody who wants to learn driving. You are expected to go to a driving school. Unlike maybe you just, your husband will just say, okay, Madam, come and see it. You enter. Okay, to, to, to. how would you say that the setting up of this uh, state level? Uh, road uh, safety agencies or organizations have enhanced the work that you do? It has actually enhanced the work that we do. We, 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 we because for the, for the NURT uh, man, he feels that it's about states trying to just generate revenue. You see, we, we, we wanted, we introduced that. We tried to get the buy-in of the state governments for us to have state agencies uh, to actually assist because we cannot be everywhere, especially in township. We have always emphasized on our boys to go to the highway and leave the township uh, operations to state uh, agencies. And uh, I think, uh, like in Lagos State, they are doing very wonderful. The traffic management agency in Lagos is doing, is doing wonders. Aside Lagos, is there any other state that is doing if, Even something? Kaduna is doing well. Kaduna State is doing well. Kano State is doing well. And so many other states are doing well. Okay, uh, Suleiman, uh, let's give you this opportunity. It all depends each person views. Yeah, because uh, of time, we have to round up. But okay. let's give up, uh, this opportunity to Suleiman for his final words, perhaps in, in one minute. Uh, tell us uh, okay. your, your expectations. Okay, 
Okay. I'm asking the question. What last did you see V I O carrying a letter L going around testing the driver? The last one. The, 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 the drivers who come, they can only drive, they can only test a vehicle, go to the articulated vehicle. An articulated driver, it is we really are trained the articulated driver. The articulated driver will not have to be a motor mess before at least six before you come up to start a business. We are the people helping the government. And then the Kabila State government, I think that the last time, I'm, I'm, I'm an individual, you know, I got my license in, and I'm saying this in any form I get an, uh, an opportunity. I got license in 1976. When you got in 1976, it is hectic to get a driving license. It is something of what is Suleiman Nzaki, the uh, Special Advisor on Intergovernmental Affairs and NGOs, NRTW uh, headquarters. Thank you for joining us on Daybreak and sharing this insight with us. We have to let you go. Uh, perhaps in one minute, if you can just conclude your thoughts on this. Well, uh, my advice to Nigerians and indeed drivers is to, as much as possible, exercise caution wherever they are on the road. Uh, very many of the areas missions that uh, we have crashes, they have very good roads. Those areas have very good roads, but speeding is the major cause of such crashes. So as much as possible, I wish to appeal to drivers to please reduce their speed. Ensure you comply with the regulated speed limit. All and right. anywhere you find yourself, Try to, as much as possible, obey traffic rules and regulations. All right. Thank you so that, much. I think we'll be able to uh, th Thank you so much, DCC Hassan Abdurrahman Biba, for joining us on Daybreak and uh, sharing this insight with us. Thank you very much. Look forward to having you again. And uh, that's our show for today. In case uh, if you mi you've missed, uh, you can always watch across all our social media platforms and also on our YouTube live stream. Let's do this again tomorrow. My name is Ayuba Ilea. Thanks for watching. Thank you for joining us this morning. Join us same time, same station tomorrow. My name is Stella Iaji, and do have a very pleasant day.